Do I want to do this? Come on. Or do I want to do this? Well, I think the answer is quite clear. We want this. Go come back. All right, my friends, who's right and who's wrong? Is it Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson? Two very awesome short game guys. Phil is regarded as having one of the best short games of all time and one of the few people to even rival that would be the ultimate greatest player ever is Tiger Woods. And his short game was, <laughs> I mean, that's as good as it gets. And both of them had incredibly different chipping methods. Phil is famous for that good old hands forward hinge and hold style of chipping. Whereas Tiger Woods is much more of a neutral setup here, center, and really releases that club head. But which one is best? Which one is best for you? Is there even a difference? So with both of these methods, the setup is completely different and that influences how the club head reacts, not only with the ground, but with the ball at impact. With the fill hinge and hold method, the club is much more shut down, the hands are much more forward and you're gonna use a lot less bounce of the club when you're striking the ball. So more of the club face is gonna hit the ball before the club hits the ground. With the, let's say, Tiger Woods method, well, the hands are more center, which means more of the bounce of your wedge is going to interact with the turf. And the ball will act dramatically different coming off the club face with that method versus the Phil Mickelson method. At this point, I'm not giving one method the win versus the other or saying one is better than the other, but they're both completely different. And one of the deciding factors for you is gonna be this. What are the bad shots with each method, right? So with your hands forward and the club coming in the ball, a bad shot could be that. Well, that's no good and you're swinging again. Or a bad shot could be really thin and zinging across the green. Whereas with the hands center, Tiger method, a bad shot could be same thing, chunk it, but I'm putting still. Or in reverse, this could be your bad shot here. Way over the green. The good shots for both methods are gonna be good regardless. It's the bad shots that we have to factor into the equation so we know what's gonna work best for us. Also, don't just try both methods with your 60 degree wedge. This is a pitching wedge. This might be something you'd wanna give a little try as well with the fill method as well as the tiger method. You'll also need to practice these from different distances. Fill. Ooh. Tiger, and from all different types of lies, uphill, downhill, you're gonna need to know how you perform in each scenario. And which, which of those two guys do you think actually had the better short game? Comment below, let me know. Is it Tiger or Phil? We're voting right now. This is it. Here are the pros for me for Phil Mickelson method. One is you're really going to feel confident about hitting the ball first before the ground. And that is never a bad thing. So that's one of the main pros. Two is you rarely hit it fat with the fill method. You're really not gonna hit too much behind the ball unless you totally chop down on it, you know, like that. But for the most part, if you keep that club low, you're going to have pretty good contact. And another pro is it's very versatile with multiple clubs. Hinge, hold. And you're solving a lot of fundamental issues. You're keeping your hands ahead of the club head, which 
for the most part, it is a good thing. The cons, however, are that ball for the most part is gonna come out really low. And to get it high, you really have to move it forward in your stance, and then you can start running into fat problems. Also, the really bad shot, I mean, it's, it's really bad. So those are the major pros and cons with the Phil Mickelson method. And you gotta ask yourself, am I comfortable with the cons? Now how about Tiger's method? And make sure, you, uh, make sure you share this video with one of your friends who needs a little short game help. Just share away. You have my permission. Just hit the share button. It's right over here. There you go. Pros and cons with Tiger's method are this. One, it's very versatile with a lot of different clubs. You can, you can do that all day long with every club in your bag pretty much. Two, I can hit it higher as you just saw. Take it up and just by moving it in my stance a little bit, I can take it a little down, let it run out. So it's very versatile. Also, this method resembles for the most part every other swing in your bag. Your putt, hands are pretty much centered, your driver, all your irons, everything kind of has the same setup and you're utilizing more of a rotational type of motion with your body. So you're always rotating through the shot. So it resembles pretty much every other swing that you're gonna use. The cons are this, you are going to be using the bounce of the club into the ground. So you have to be comfortable with hitting the ground many times before the ball. You're not hitting it with the leading edge, you're hitting it with the bounce, and a lot of people are just not comfortable with doing that. And they flinch and get a little yip action. So if you are prone to the yips, this method might not be the best for you because we're actually using the ground to our benefit. If you don't know what the bounce is, it's this. Some people mistakenly call it the sole. It is the sole, but the bounce is the angle at which the sole goes below the leading edge. Here's your leading edge. Here's the sole. The angle equals the bounce. This is a eight degree bounce, eight bounce. That means it goes eight degrees below the leading edge. In essence, you should be hitting that on the ground, not that. So Phil's method kind of makes that eight degree bounce three, two degrees, where Tiger's makes it, keeps it eight. So you're using bounce versus not using bounce for the most part. So which one is better? One thing I dislike doing is saying that, oh, because this guy is so brilliant at short game that we should do what he does or what she does. But we conveniently leave out the fact that, for example, Phil Mickelson spent hours and hours and hundreds and thousands of hours in his backyard practicing everything. So his ability to put that club head on the ball is a little bit better than everybody else on the planet. Same thing with Tiger Woods. He's done this for so long that he can use, and so can Phil, anything they want because they're always gonna put the club head on the ball in a professional, world-class way. With that being said, here's what I would do if I were you. Whatever you use for your regular swing, if you set up like this with your driver and all your wedges, with your hands way forward, then I would recommend you continue to do the exact same thing when picking your short game shots. I don't do that. I set up very neutral and I try to get a good rotational swing. Therefore, it wouldn't make any sense for me to then jack my hands way forward and do something totally completely foreign to me. So I set up very neutral, hands in the center, and I try to keep the same rotational motion going in my golf swing. But above everything else, you gotta get out there and practice and experiment so you know which one works for you the most often. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. See you next time.